judgment in the matter of Barton versus Wright Hassel LLP. Lord Sumption will summarise the judgment in their case. Uh, this appeal is about time limits uh, in county court actions, specifically time limits for the service of a claim form. Uh, Mr. Barton has been engaged for many years in litigation with successive firms of solicitors. Uh, round one uh, of his campaign of litigation began in 2005 when he sued a law firm called Bowen Johnson for negligence in the conduct of proceedings for ancillary relief following his divorce some six years earlier. He instructed the defendant firm, Wright Hassel, to act for him. In May 2007, some 18 months into the proceedings, he fell out with them over fees. And with the court's permission, they ceased to act for him. There followed round two, when Wright Hassel sued him for their unpaid fees and ultimately obtained judgment. The present proceedings are round three, which began in 2013 when Mr. Barton began an action against Wright Hassel. He complained that they were negligent in their conduct of the action against his previous solicitors and should not have ceased to act for him in the way that they did. The claim form was issued on the 25th of February 2013 uh, towards the end of the six-year limitation period. Normally, the court will organize service of a claim form itself but Mr. Barton chose uh, to handle that aspect of things personally. He had four months in which to do that before the claim form expired. He had a brief correspondence with Wright Hassel's solicitors, Berryman's, but made no attempt to serve the claim form on them uh, until the 24th of June 2013, the last day of the four-month period. He then tried to serve it by email. On the 4th of July, 2013, Berryman's solicitors, Berryman, sorry, rejected this mode of service on the ground that they did not accept service by email. It is now probably too late for Mr. Barton to start a new action, because the limitation period appears to have expired. The present appeal arises out of his attempts to save the original action. He applied to the circuit judge to extend the four-month period or else to order that his attempted service by email should be treated as good service. Both applications were rejected. He appealed uh, solely on the question whether the four-month period should be extended. The Court of Appeal dismissed his appeal. He now appeals to the Supreme Court. By a majority of three to two, this court agrees with the decision of the Court of Appeal. Uh, the reasons are set out in a judgment which I have prepared, with which Lord Wilson and Lord Carnworth agree. Dissenting judgments uh, have been written by Lady Hale and Lord Briggs. Under the rules, a claim form cannot be served by email unless the party to be served or his solicitor has indicated in writing that he is willing to accept service by that method. This is not just a technicality. Service of the claim form is an important step. Uh, it stops time running for limitation purposes and it starts time running for further stages in the litigation. The reason why a solicitor must indicate in advance whether he is prepared to accept service by email is that the claim form requires immediate attention from qualified people in the solicitor's office and the office must be organized to ensure that that happens. Otherwise, there is a serious risk given the volume of emails arriving in the average solicitor's office, that it will not receive the attention that it requires. Berryman's had not indicated in writing that they were prepared to accept service by email, and they were therefore entitled to reject service when Mr. Barton tried to effect it that way. The court has power to extend the time for service of the claim form. The circumstances in which it will exercise that power depend on the facts. It will usually be necessary at the very least for the claimant to show that the defendant or his solicitor was aware of the claim and that requirement is satisfied in the present case. They were aware of it. But that is not usually enough. The court will want to know whether the claimant took reasonable steps to serve the claim form according to the rules. Mr. Barton took no steps to serve it until the very end of the four-month period and then adopted a method of service which was not permitted by the rules. He took no steps to find out whether Berryman's would accept service by email, except to look at the legal notices on web Berryman's website, which said nothing about it. The reason, he says, is that he didn't know what the rules said about service by email. 
This court is well aware of the problems which lead many people in current circumstances to represent themselves. But the rules apply to litigants in person in the same way as to those who are represented by lawyers. It is reasonable to expect a litigant in person who is about to take a significant step in the court's procedure to find out what the rules are and to take steps to comply with them. The rules regarding service by email are drafted in clear language. They are accessible without difficulty on the internet. Mr. Barton knew about the four-month deadline for service. He knew that he was coming to the end of his six-year six limitation period. His real problem is that he missed both deadlines by failing to check what was required and to do it in good time before they expired. His appeal will accordingly be dismissed.